Good morning, aunties, uncles, friends, and allies. Happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. My name is Gunjan Mittal, and welcome to another episode of My API Live, where you'll receive accessible, pertinent information about health, mental health, safety concerns, and community events. We strive to be culturally relevant in our programming by discussing bigger topics that span beyond Asia, America, and those of us in the Asian diaspora. If you're new to this broadcast, the information presented in My API Live is particular to the Asian community, yet still relevant to the greater Austin communities. Today, we'll start with a simple mindfulness practice using acupressure We'll talk about mental health in our communities and some fun activities and events happening around town. As you know, our broadcast is available both on Austin Public Health's Facebook page and the new YouTube channel, which is much easier to access and share with your family and friends. So please save and subscribe on YouTube and to the My API Live playlist to easily find the show in the future. And we'll drop that link in the chat. In honor of Asian Pacific American or APA Heritage Month, I wanted to bring in some traditional healing practices that many of us may be familiar with and or we use it at home. You may have heard of acupressure, which is basically acupuncture without the use of needles, and we don't puncture the skin. Instead, we use our fingers or a pointed object to press into the pressure points to aid in pain relief, to prevent injuries, or even to alleviate any ailments from settling into our bodies. And this is a preventive healing method and one that has been proven to cure ailments. So I'll walk you through a simple and easy way to relieve stress, feelings of panic or anxiety, and to aid in overall relaxation. So let's sit with what's showing up for us right now before we begin today's mindfulness exercise. As you sit with your emotions, thoughts, and your body, if anything comes up that feels unsettling or uncomfortable, please do take care as you see fit. Try to make your spine straighter than it is right now, and if your body allows it. Just so you know, having this straight spine allows oxygen to go deeper into your body and into your cells. And we want to open and expand as we breathe in and relax the body as we breathe out. So let's begin by closing our eyes for a few seconds and bringing our awareness to your breath. We always start and end with the breath because breath is life. So breathing in and out of the nose very slowly. The belly rises when you breathe in and the belly collapses as you breathe out. Open your eyes gently and begin rubbing your palms together to create friction and heat. Now that we have energized our hands, let's begin with light pressure onto different acupressure points in our face and hands. And we'll press with our index or pointer fingers on either side of the head in our temples three times. One, two, three. Now move to the junction where the upper and the lower jaw meet near the ears and press three times one two three 
Now press three times behind the ears and pinch the earlobes six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And move just above the middle part of the upper lip and three times here. Now on either side of the nostrils. And finally, in between your eyebrows uh, or your third eye. Take a moment to breathe in and out right here. Now let's take a moment to do acupressure on our hands. Press and hold for three seconds in the fleshy part between the index finger and the thumb and hold for one, two, three, and release. Let's do the other hand, the same place. One, two, three, release. Relax your hands, close your eyes for a few moments. Breathing in and breathing out. Gently open your eyes. These acupressure points that we apply direct pressure onto can help alleviate headaches, can aid in focus and clarity, and can also be a sleeping aid when you're suffering from insomnia. It's also a great way to bring blood to the face which can help in keeping our skin healthy and looking youthful. And do this as often as you like. Thank you for joining me. So first, let's talk about what exactly is APA Heritage Month. Asian Pacific American Heritage Month takes place in May, and it's an opportunity to learn about the rich and diverse history culture and traditions it, while celebrating our contributions to society. The month also celebrates the contributions of Pacific Islanders who have a distinct culture and history that's separate from Asian American communities. This is a rather broad term, Asian Pacific, and it encompasses all of the Asian continent and the Pacific Islands. For example, Pacific Islanders are folks from Hawaii, Guam, or Samoa. So as you can see, the label of APA or API covers a lot of cultures, languages, dialects, religions that are spread across the continent of Asia and the islands. Naturally, it can also complicate or our cultural identities. Many of us probably identify ourselves as Vietnamese, Indian, and so on until we are in the U.S., then we learn about the term Asian, and some start to identify with it. Because the term Asian is so broad and includes so many countries with unique culture, language, and religions, it's difficult at times to know who falls into which category or why we all fall into that category. This leads me to a, another question of what does it mean to have two or more cultural identities and how are we dealing with these many ways of being Asian in this country? I, for one, have had to address my own and my family's cultural identities, cultural clashes, and my mental health being Indian in America. I eventually figured out my own ways to address my stress and emotions and how I fit into this world. So I invite you to think about what does mental health mean to you and your family? How do you deal with the different parts of yourself while living in this home away from home? 
If you struggle with feelings of isolation or not belonging to any land, where can you go? Many of us have very complicated and traumatic histories, especially for those who came here as refugees or asylum seekers. We all have a different journey, a different story to tell, and they all mean something. To tell your story in a safe space to someone who's willing to listen and support you is important to our own healing. So who can you talk to when you're feeling down? Do you have a support system in place? Our Asian upbringing can be riddled with guilt, shame, and fear. Fear of family secrets coming into the open, or fear of being judged, or fear, fear of being misunderstood, and so on. And caring for our mental health is usually such a taboo topic, and the thoughts of opening up to a therapist feels not only foreign, but can also feel a little selfish, especially for the women caregivers who have always put the needs of their family before their own. And we are now finding out the benefits of talking about and working through some of our own traumatic histories and journeys with the right people. Seeking help should not be riddled with guilt, shame, or fear. In fact, addressing mental health is important for our survival as a person and for the health of our entire family and beyond. This action can make you feel lighter and more free. If you are looking to learn how to have more conversations in your family, say between children, parents, grandparents, we invite you to attend this event at the Asian American Resource Center on the 20th of May, which is next Saturday. The event is called, Have You Eaten Yet? and intergenerational communication in Asian families. And they will dive deeper into how we can improve communication, how to build support systems within our homes, and how to create a safe space for one another that works for everyone. This event will consist of a panel discussion, workshop, and community resource fair accompanied by H-E-B gift card door prizes, Starbucks coffee, and lunch from So's Chinese takeout delivery. So don't miss out. This particular event is presented by the Asians, Asian Texans for Justice in collaboration with the Asian American Resource Center. And they will provide interpreters for various Asian languages, as well as childcare. And please indicate in the ticket form if you need these resources. And we'll put that link in the chat as well. Here's another event to keep in mind for this month. Again, the Asian American Resource Center is hosting its 10th annual Celebrasia Austin event on Saturday. That's actually today, May 13th, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The family-friendly festival is free and open to the public and celebrates Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. This indoor-outdoor event offers performances, food vendors, exhibits, and cultural experiences for the entire family. To reserve your free spot, please go to the, their Celebrasia Eventbrite page, and that's listed in the comment section. Now, if you're interested in some mental health resources for yourself or a family member, please look up the following, and I'll add them all in the comments as well. First, we have Integral Care. If you're in need of language services, when you call their 24-hour hotline, 
472-4357. Please let them know which language you prefer to receive those services. And you can also visit their website, integralcare.org, for more info. The YWCA is also a mental health resource, and you can get more information by visiting their website, ywcaaustin.org. If anyone is living with an abusive partner or family member, you can also reach out to Asian Family Support Services of Austin, and they have a 24-hour confidential hotline and that is 877-281-8371. And their website is afsaaustin.org, and that's A-F-S-S-A-U-S-T-I-N dot O-R-G. And they can help you with any questions you may have, or even if you need someone to talk to. And lastly, for anyone who is a survivor of torture, can reach out to Center for Survivors of Torture. You can visit their website, cstnet.org, for more information. So these are just a few mental health resources out there specific to our Asian populations. And hopefully this list meets your needs in some way. Remember that building a support system to help you along in life and so that we're not alone in this journey is a wonderful way to connect and help others who may be struggling in the same way. If you find this information helpful, please share this video with others and then join us again next month on our new Austin Public Health YouTube channel on June 3rd at 10 a.m. Each video is also available in Mandarin, Burmese, and Vietnamese. Thank you for joining me, and may your day be full of peace and joy. Be safe, be well, and be kind to one another. Thank you for joining.